Good evening and welcome to our Further Maths Applicant event. Uh, my name is Simon. I am the Deputy Head of Maths here at Rygate College and yep, glad to see so many people uh, joining us remotely this evening. What we're going to be doing today is just talking through a few points. If you came to the open, uh, open evenings and saw our Further Maths room, you may well have an idea of some of these already, but for those of you that didn't, or those of you that want a reminder, we'll go through these things again. So first off, we're going to briefly talk about what is further maths, just giving you an overview of kind of what it is and what you need to get in your GCSEs in order to study it here at college. We'll then talk about why it's why you would want to study further maths and then look in more detail about why is it important to study further maths, which is kind of the big focus of what we're doing here this evening. We'll introduce some current further math students um, who you should be able to see on your screens. Further math students, can you give everyone a wave? Thank you. <laughs> um, and then we'll um, open up for a Q&A. If you have any questions throughout the evening, please put them in the Q&A section um, and we'll get to them as and when we can in that Q&A section. So, First things first, what is further maths? Well, the biggest question that we get asked is, what is the difference? And further maths is a second A-level that you take in addition to a maths A-level. So you can't do just further maths. You either whoops, have to do maths and further maths or just maths. The point of it is it's designed to broaden and deepen your understanding of mathematical concepts. Some of the content will build on the A-level math syllabus and other topics will be brand new. Now, depending on whether you take things like additional maths or further maths GCSE, you may well see some of those topics already, but those are not mandatory. All we require here at college for you to do further maths is you need to get a seven in your GCSE. Some schools I, I am aware um, need the further maths GCSE, we don't, okay? Just a seven at GCSE maths. So why study further maths? Well, the first thing, and we say this a lot, is it's fun. If you think that that is a bonkers statement, then further maths might not be your cup of tea. The reason it's kind of really important you've got to enjoy maths is it takes up so much of your timetable studying further maths. So you've got to really enjoy it to be able to engage with it. The materials you meet in further maths will likely be quickly met at university and covered at much more rapid pace than there. So if you're looking to go and do a STEM degree, all of those concepts that we meet in the further maths A-level that if you didn't do further maths would be brand new to you at university, you already are, have done some of those. So you've already seen kind of some of those concepts before. Some courses require further maths for you to do. Now, this is not many, and later on this evening, we're gonna talk a little bit about kind of universities and some of their requirements. And some universities for some courses prefer further maths to be taken. The other thing as well, here at college, students who take further maths do extremely well in their maths A-level. This summer's results, 100% of our further math students got an A star to B in their maths A-level grade. And in fact, nearly 100% got an A star to B in their further maths grade as well. So we get very, very good results. So the importance of further maths. The reason we're doing this tonight is some students choose to start on maths and don't necessarily realize that they are that they need further maths or further maths would be useful until they start trying to make their university choices. The topics in the A-level further maths often link well with topics outside of a maths degree. So things like complex numbers, matrices, these topics called Maclaurin's or Taylor series, differential equations, and then decision maths as well, come up all over the place 
outside of a maths degree and in a big way. So if you've done further maths before, you will have seen these. So you, as I said, you will have had an introduction to these topics, whereas you might not otherwise have seen them before. And in a first term of a degree, you might be going through these topics for the first time incredibly quickly. As an example, these, this is a list that was put together by um, a charity that we use called AMSP, um, who we they do a lot of training and a lot of very good, um, a lot of very good resources. But they put together this kind of this list of where big maths topics can be used outside of a maths degree, and we can see things like chemistry have a lot of different areas of um, math that they use. Physics, mechanical engineering, also in a big way with a lot of the dynamics that we look at. Advanced calculus and differential equation techniques are very prevalent in a lot of different STEM courses from physics and chemistry through to even economics, um, business, that kind of thing. Statistics also comes up in a very different way that in the physics areas that you might not have seen when we start when you start looking at topics like thermodynamics or mechanics. And then group theory, which is something we briefly touch on in one of our decision units, comes up across the board in, in chemistry, but again, it has big links with economics as well. So here are some statistics. So the AMSP a few years ago surveyed a, a large number of degree courses to, to see kind of what degrees like and need further maths. Now this is for the 2020 entry. They don't have data for 2022 yet, uh, but um, we can see here that for a maths degree, 10% of the courses that they surveyed require further maths as an A-level. And then 21% in addition prefer you to have further maths. In terms of the other STEM subjects or where, where it's kind of very, very maths heavy, so very in terms of the physics and engineering side of things, you can see on the maths side, for a lot of these courses, the majority of them need or prefer you to have a maths A level. And then there are slightly small, lower statistics for those courses that prefer you to take further maths. Whereas, whereas these statistics seem, these numbers seem relatively low, this is their preference. You will find, particularly for Russell Group universities, the vast majority of students for STEM courses will have done further maths. So that's another good reason to think about doing it is if you're looking to go into physics, computer science, engineering, or some other STEM field, or maybe economics, you're going to be in a group or a class with a lot of people who have already done further maths. You can see on this slide as well, Although the data is quite old, from the 2013 to 2014 intake of applicants, 60, almost 60% of maths undergraduates took a further maths A level. And that is only getting bigger and bigger as the number of people doing further maths increases. And nearly 26% of engineering students had also taken an A level in further maths. So that's that point I was making there with, you're going to be in a, in a degree room or in a, in a lecture hall with, people who have done further maths. Just to kind of give you an idea from certain universities in terms of what they like, why they like further maths. You can see University of Cambridge, obviously one of the top universities in the country. Although they don't necessarily require further maths, they, the quote from their FAQ 
makes clear reference to if your school does not does offer further maths, you should consider taking it. For at an interview for Oxford or Cambridge, if you're applying for STEM, they know that if you come here or if your school that you go to does for, does offer further maths, they will ask you why you didn't take it. Opting to not take further maths when it is available at your school may well disadvantage your application. So it puts you on the back foot already. And that's for not just for maths, but for a wide range of STEM fields. You can see there Durham say that if you want to guarantee that you'll be able to take a significant amount of mathematics beyond year one, you must take A-level mathematics and at least AS-level further mathematics. Now, we're very lucky here at college that you can take an AS level in further maths. It's not a common option, but we do have two different pathways of that that you can take. You can either start on further maths and opt to take the AS level at the end of your first year, provided you're doing further maths as a program of four subjects, or if you're only taking three subjects, including maths, and you do well enough in your first year, you can then pick up further maths as an extra, as an AS in your second year. This is, this is a good option. And in fact, the University of Oxford say on their mathematics um, FAQs, we are aware that some students don't realize they want to do maths until partway through their year. So taking the AS is an acceptable option for them. Other universities, so Imperial here, for computer science, they strongly encourage applicants to take further maths all the way through to get a full A level. And for their mechanical engineering course, they say further mathematics A, a level is useful, but not an essential requirement for entry. So again, we've got that idea of preferred. One of our teachers here at college, one of our chemistry teachers went to Imperial having done further maths at when he was here at college and he has also said a similar thing that the content that he needed for his degree in chemical engineering was so important because he was would have been so far behind other students even universities like glasgow say for their physics further mathematics is also recommended to aid university preparation but will not affect an offer so again it's that idea of the further maths, they might not need it. For you. you might not need it to get there, but it'll help when you get to university. Now, from a separate study outside of the STEM fields, this is now talking about the economics, uh, an economics degree. 80% of economics students surveyed stated there was much more mathematics involved in their economics degree program than they expected. Economics is a heavily mathematical course. And again, further maths from just the amount of maths that you do will really, really help when you get there. So final thoughts from me before we start um, hearing from our student panel. Just to summarize, the content of further maths is very good preparation for many STEM degrees and degrees outside of STEM. It'll help you not necessarily get to university, but when you get, once you're there, it'll very much help. Some courses recommend further maths and may reduce an offer if further maths is included. This is something that we have seen more and more over the past few years is universities for potentially, let's say a physics degree may have an offer of A star, A star, A, if you take if you don't take further maths and then a star aa if you do that kind of thing nationally the proportion of students taking further maths is increasing so again you're going to be in lecture halls with people who have done further maths and the proportion of students on stem degrees having taken further maths is also increasing as well so in order to put yourself in a really good position you should be thinking about, well, is further maths a good option for me? I will say it's not, a, it's not for everyone. Further maths is absolutely not for everyone. And I'm not going to sit here and say you have to do it. But if, you had never, if you'd never thought about doing further maths, but you know you want to go and do something in STEM, you should really think about further maths as a potential option. 
because in the long run, it could help. So we're now gonna hear from our students. I'm gonna sort of give the students some questions, but I want they would like them to introduce themselves first. So um, if we start from top left on my screen. Uh, hi, hi everyone, I'm Conrad. I take maths, further maths, physics, and computer science. Um, yeah, hi. Hi, I'm Annie. I take maths, further maths, physics, and the classical civilization. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Gwen, and I take maths, further maths, psychology, and chemistry. Hi, I'm Maya. I take maths, further maths, chemistry, and economics. So all four of our students here are lower six students. So they have been here now for a few months. Um, and as you can see, all four of them do four A-levels. So um, we'll start with, um, I'll ask Maya this question actually. Why did you choose to do four A-levels instead of three? Well, mainly, well, I do really like maths and I wanted to add on the further maths on, so then I had to basically take four, but also um, thinking on doing economics, um, university level so maths and further maths is quite helpful and then I quite like to leave it a bit more open with my chemistry to have more of the science-based subjects so yeah thank you um now um Conrad you kind of have what we would necessarily think of as sort of a traditional mix of subjects with the maths of further maths, physics, and computer science, very, very popular combination there. Um, so why did you um, settle on those four subjects? Um, I really like maths. They all have a massive um, maths focus. Also, um, uh, I'm not really sure which, uh, I, I've, I've always been quite interested in physics and computer science and maths. So um, basically, it's it's kind of one massive amalgamated subject. So um, kind of decreases workload a bit as well, because there's a big overlap with things like mechanics is in maths, further maths, and physics, and decision maths has some overlap with um, the year two computer science course. So um, so yeah, uh, I think that they just make quite a good pair or good four. Thank you. So, Gwen, you kind of, as I said, have been here for a, a few months now. How are you finding the workload of doing four subjects? Uh, honestly, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, I think staying on top of the work that you have and like doing it, not exactly when you get it, because a lot of it's set on Monday morning, but just trying to get a lot of stuff done before the weekend has actually been quite helpful. And um, Obviously, because I take four subjects, I have quite a lot of days where I'm in in the morning and then I have a long gap and then I'm in in the afternoon. So rather than going home, I normally just go sit upstairs in the LIC, uh, the IRC, and uh, just do all my homework and stuff. But the homework hasn't actually been too bad. It sounds like a lot. Um, but if you enjoy maths, it's not terrible doing it. So, yeah, it actually hasn't been too bad. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, and Annie. In terms of your subjects, you now you've got your maths, further maths, physics is the, the sort of, as we said, typical combination, but you've got classical civilization on there. Uh, what made you choose classics as a fourth option instead of, you know, something still very STEM related? Um, I wanted to have a bit more diversity in my 4A levels and classical civilization sounded um, really interesting. When I first came here, I took um, philosophy and classics rather than physics and classics in addition to maths and further maths um, so I had but then I changed my mind and I decided I wanted to do another STEM related one. Lovely thank you so yeah we're very fortunate here that we've got such a broad further maths um, range of teaching staff that um, we can allow students or we can facilitate students really picking any combination of subjects that they would like with further maths. 
Um, we don't have students here tonight from the upper six, but we have um, two students in the upper six who do maths, further maths, and then no other STEM subjects. One studies um, politics and history and the other does two languages. So very much kind of very broad and very flexible with what we can do. Um, in terms of kind of thinking about the class sizes and things, um, Gwen, how are you finding sort of the, the size of the class in your further maths group? Uh, the size of the class is actually quite good. I think we've probably got about 15, maybe slightly less in our further maths class. And um, it's quite nice because obviously you get to know everyone quite well because you see them pretty much every day, seeing four times a week. Um, so it's quite like a close knit class, to be honest. I feel closer with my further maths class than I do with any of my other classes. Um, and the size of the class is really handy because um, you know, if you have any questions, it's so much easier to ask because there isn't as many people. And um, also, if you have like a like a personal question that you need to ask, like just something that you don't understand, it doesn't feel like it's holding any, as many people back because obviously it's like there's not as many people who might need to ask questions. So uh, I feel like you can spend more time if you have a specific like query about a math problem, you can spend more time going over it because there isn't as many people who will need to ask a question. So having a smaller class is quite nice. Yeah, and that's kind of something that we have because of the way the nature of further maths, it tends to it, it tends to self-select. So we, we can get away often with a, with slightly smaller classes than the maths cohort, which is nice. Now, Conrad, you were saying something before we started this evening about um, you like the fact that as a further maths student, you have your own further maths class for both maths and further maths. So what what particularly do you like about that? Um, so if I went to um, uh, if I went to an, another school or college, uh, often they separate maths and further maths classes which means that you start further maths at the same time that you start maths, um, which means that you, you start covering a lot of really difficult topics, which you don't necessarily have a base for. Um, and also you cover your maths topics much slower uh, and they tend to be slightly easier. Um, whereas at Rygate, because your, your, your maths class and further maths class is the same, so you, you kind of go through maths incredibly quickly and then um, after that, you've got uh, much more time to spend on further maths. Uh, you've got a much better base for further maths. Um, and you, I, I think you, you feel like you're um, spending time more efficiently. And I think it, it works quite well overall. Excellent. Thank you. Um, now, as Conrad kind of mentioned, the, the pace is quite fast. Um, because it's a double A level, we you have double the amount of time on your timetable and we go through things twice as fast. Um, Annie, how have you found the pacing of the lessons so far this year? Um, it, it hasn't been too bad. It, it's quite, uh, because you've got double the number of lessons, it doesn't feel like you're covering things too fast and rushing through them, but it does mean that you cover a lot of topics in um, quite a short space of time, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so yeah, kind of that's a really different way that we do the further maths here in terms of the um, the way we we structure our course. So as Comrade kind of mentioned, some some places will do um, maths and further maths at the same time. Some schools or colleges may do the entirety of the maths A-level in the first year and not touch on the further maths until later on. What we do at college is between September and Christmas, we cover the first year content for maths. Then after Christmas, we cover the first year content for further maths. So by the end of the first year, all further maths students have done half of the maths, full maths A-level and half of the full further maths A-level. After Easter, students have a progression exam, which is an internal exam that we manage. And then we start the second year content for maths. That continues after September or in September in the second year. And then around just after October half term, 
we start the second year of further maths. So some students may not really get it, or some students might not get a feel for the further maths for a long time, but still really, really enjoy it. Now, Gwen mentioned about the sort of camaraderie in a, in a further maths class, and that, that is something that we consistently see because students spend you know, eight hours a week, potentially more if they're all in the same tutor group together. So get to know each other really, really well. Um, Maya, how have you found that, have you found that that's helped in terms of your maths learning? I think it really does because you spend so much time with those people that you like gain more confidence. So you like, you can just ask people more questions. And like, if you're not understanding something, you have more like people that you're friends with that you can just ask and like, it just feels nicer because you see them a lot of the time. So you get to know them quite well, which is really nice. Thank you. So we kind of talked about kind of students at the moment. Um, although none of you have necessarily done much yet in terms of progression, um, have any of you thought about what you may want to go and do after you leave college? So feel free to say no. It is a perfectly acceptable answer to have no idea quite yet, but I know those of you who do aspire, which I'm assuming is all of you, have started to think about that. So maybe if we start with, um, start with Comrade and then we'll sort of go, go through. Um, I, it's, it's hard to decide. Uh, I really enjoy most of my subjects. Currently, I'm thinking of um, um, maybe a computer science degree, but it's uh, it's still really in the open. Yep, that's fair enough. I mean, maths lends itself really well, and as we as we've kind of seen, the further maths will be really useful. Um, any of you had any thoughts about what you'd like to do after college yet? Um, I'm kind of torn between maths and classics at degree level, and I've thought about maybe doing them as joint honours, possibly. Mm -hmm. So that's, again, kind of the beauty of the degree, university degree choice is with doing joint honours. You know, students who maybe think they want to involve some maths in their course, the further maths, again, will be really, really helpful. Um, Maya, where are your thoughts so far? Um, I'm like thinking and doing an economics degree, but I'm not entirely sure. But with the Aspire programme, we've been looking into it a bit more, as Simon was saying. So I'm maybe thinking more towards the econometrics, which is a bit even more mathsy because I'm liking maths more now. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there are areas, specific areas, even within certain subjects where it, you can make it more mathsy. And Gwen. Uh, I currently have very little idea about what degree I want to do. Um, I'm kind of torn between all of my subjects. Well, I'm really enjoying all of my subjects currently. Um, I think my plan is if I haven't decided by next year, I'll go and do maths because obviously I've been doing most of maths, like out of my subjects, I've been doing maths the most. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely fine. So in terms of things that we do at college, all all our students here mentioned that. Uh, have are taken part in the Aspire program, which is designed to help students start making those decisions, um, particularly with reference to top level universities like Russell Group, Oxford and Cambridge, that kind of thing. All students, whether, whether you're in Aspire or not, though, we start to focus on that in your around February, March time of your first year here, where we have a couple of off timetable days designed to really help you start thinking and making those decisions about what you want to go and do but it is a hard decision so it, it's entirely fine that you're all sort of a bit not sure yet have you got have you guys got any comments at all that you'd like to say about further maths how are you generally finding it so far Silence. that's okay i think we've covered a lot of a lot of the key points um so we've got about half an hour left. So at this point, let me get my screen back. Okay. We'll kind of open it to the QA. So again, if you have any questions, please do put them in the QA section. Um, we've got a couple of questions already um, that are sort of 
ones that I can answer, not necessarily for our students. But if you have specific questions for our students as well, please do ask and uh, I will pass them on. Uh, so the first one that we got was what percentage or number of students start further maths and drop it as it's too much? Um, we do have a few and it does vary a lot from year to year, but I'd say out of a cohort of maybe sort of fit around 50 students, we usually get drop out of about 10. Um, so not, not tremendously many, but proportionally, you know, about 20%. Um, in term, that's usually by, by October half term. It's not necessarily because the further maths is too much. It's usually those students are on four subjects and it's the workload of four that they're finding too much. And they're thinking, oh, maybe I don't want to go and do maths. So for a lot of students in that position, the further maths is the one that comes off. Some students of those realize later on, actually, I like the, I, I miss the further math and then pick it up again in the second year. But as I said, it varies a lot year on year. The option that I said about students who decide to take the AS further maths at the end of their first year, that's not very many students. Um, last year, we had no students do that. The year before, we had one. So it, it, although it is an option, it is by no means a popular option, but it's still a good option if you think, okay, I enjoyed the further maths, but I know I don't want to go and do STEM, or I, I know I don't want to continue with the further maths into my second year, and that's a perfectly acceptable option. We've got another question. Uh, would further maths help if you wanted to work in the medical field? So generally, now this is not kind of 100%, generally, if you are looking to go and do medicine, veterinary medicine or dentistry, we strongly advise that you don't do further maths. We're not saying you can't, but the advice is that because of the high demand and the very the high competitiveness of those courses, you need to focus on getting three very good A-levels. So it's much better to think of doing typically biology, chemistry, maths is a very popular combination of students looking to go into down the MBD route. But some students will do, won't necessarily do maths at all. And maybe will do biology, chemistry, psychology is another very popular option. If you're looking to go down a more engineering route, and so going into a field in maybe medical engineering, further maths may well help on the engineering side of things. So that would be very much, you'd need to do some research yourself um, with those choices. If you find the research of that difficult, or when you come to your enrollment interview in the end, of, uh, the end of August, early September, you can speak to our careers department who are very well versed on all that kind of information. So you can definitely have a chat with them about how useful it would be. We have had some students who have done further maths here and have gone to do medicine. It's not a, you definitely can't do that, but uh, the advice is generally focus on three subjects and probably don't do further maths. Okay, this is great. We've got some more questions coming in. Uh, can you repeat how much maths and further maths is taught in the first and second year? Okay, so yeah, the first term, so between September and Christmas, we cover the first year of further math, of maths content. So it's sort of two thirds pure maths, one sixth statistics, one sixth mechanics. We get that done by Christmas. After Christmas, we then focus on the first year of further maths, which is half of it is more pure maths, a quarter of it is decision maths, and a quarter of it is some more mechanics. So that is kind of the proportions there. That model more or less fits into the second year as well, but we start the um, second year maths a little bit sooner. We actually start that before summer. Okay, yes, lots of questions going through thick and, thick and fast. Is there a limit for how many people uh, can study further maths? No. Um, last year for the first time, um, at enrollment, further maths was a uh, very high demand subject. And to account for that, we put on a new cl another class. So we, we if, if more students want to do it, we will put on more classes. 
So there is no limit for how many people can study further maths, which is good. Okay. How many hours a week of lessons would you do if you're taking maths and further maths? How many hours of homework would you get for each subject? So I've done quite a lot of questions that I can answer. This is now, this is a question that our students can answer. So I am going to ask uh, that to um, Maya. So how many hours a week of lessons would you do if you're taking maths and further maths? So you do two double lessons for maths and another two double lessons for further maths. So that's a total of eight hours of maths lessons. And then we follow the two for two structure at college. So you've got two hours of structure learning for maths, another two hours of structure learning for further maths, and then two hours of homework for maths and two hours of homework for further maths. So you've got eight hours of lessons and ultimately eight hours of homework if you do both further maths and maths. Thank you. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly right. It is the equivalent of doing two full A-levels. Okay, another question, what are the class sizes? So at the moment, um, our further maths class sizes are around 16, 17 students. The maths class sizes in the lower six are about the same, uh, and in the upper six are a little bit bigger. So the upper six, the class sizes are about 20, um, but still the class sizes are never going to be bigger than 21. That is our, as a college kind of policy, that is for big departments like maths, that is the absolute maximum that a class will ever be is 21. So um, quite reasonably sized classes. That is one of the advantages of, is of further maths is the class sizes are tending to be a little smaller, um, particularly with putting on three classes. So as um, Gwen said earlier, you do get that a little bit more one-to-one -one support. Okay. Does the college re uh, recommend any bridging study after GCSEs and before starting college for maths students? So I don't know if uh, any of you four remember, but um, we did, you, you will have some tasks over the summer um, that are you can access on the website um, for all the subjects, not just maths and further maths. Um, uh, and there are three over the course of the year. So you'll get, you'll have access to some sort of now-ish, some just after Christmas, and then some over summer. In terms though of kind of subject content, um, Annie, what, do you, what would you say, what would you recommend someone who is maybe coming into a further maths course, what key topics are there from GCSE that you would be your top these are the ones you need to practice most. Um, probably things like algebra, which play quite a, uh, quite a large role in it. And also it's really important for something that you didn't really understand um, as well at GCSE, even if you could kind of do it a bit, if you didn't fully understand it, then it's important to make sure that you can properly understand it before you start the A-level. Yeah, exactly right. Thank you. Okay, another one. What grade do you need to get in your maths to do further maths AS in your second year? Typically, um, we would initially ask those, uh, speak to those students who got A's or A stars at the end of their first year. Um, but we do often have students who got B's in their first year um, doing the AS further maths. Um, but if you get anything less than that, we, we don't advise it because it is a fourth subject. So you are doing the workload of four subjects and it is tricky to do it in your second year with a with, with anything sort of a C or below. So yeah, generally B or above is what we, what you need to be getting in your maths in order to do AS further in your second year. Okay, good one for the students. So I think, yeah, we'll start and we'll go, we'll start with Gwen and go down the line. Um, was further maths more or less difficult than you expected? Um, so obviously we haven't done much of the further maths content yet because that starts after Christmas. But um, currently, I like just with the amount of maths that you're doing and just having it like almost every day, it genuinely hasn't been as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought it would it wouldn't be horrible, but I thought it would be. I would have to make myself do it a bit more, but. Um, I've just kind of found like the maths has actually been quite enjoyable and I've actually enjoyed like doing the homeworks and stuff like it hasn't been something that I've had to force myself to do as much it's actually been quite nice. 
yeah so more or less the same as Gwen so how are you doing at the same time how are you doing math like so many times a week like eight hours of lessons I personally quite like it because it's like you're doing lots of maths because like for my other subjects it feels like you don't do as much of it so if you like maths it's quite nice because you do a lot of it so yeah Yeah, um, for the maths, or, or so far it's been uh, less difficult than I expected. Um, it's It's been quite um, easy for me to stay on top of the topics we've covered so far, although um, I, I do quite like maths a lot, so I, I have I have um, seen quite a few of the topics that, because um, we've mainly just done the pure aspect of um, uh, regular maths, so I'd seen um, a lot of the things like differentiation and integration beforehand, so they weren't uh, as, as much of a shock for me. Um, it's introduced um, some new topics, but it's it's not been anywhere near as bad as I uh, bad as, I, as difficult as I expected, and it's been really enjoyable. Excellent. So we've got a few more questions. This is great. Uh, so. Um, we've got a question. I am studying GCSE further maths at my current school. Would this help me uh, with A level further maths? So, generally, the GCSE further maths is designed to help bridge the gap between GCSE and A level maths. Um, did any of you four do GCSE further maths? No? Okay. So, you can see it's absolutely not uh, mandatory. What it does do, because we do have uh, a, a decent number of students who do further maths who haven't done GCSE as as many as those as you can see with who haven't done it before. There are certain topics that we do that both in the maths and the further maths that if you've done GCSE further maths you will have seen those before so it helps you get to grips with those a little quicker but it will not necessarily help you with an A-level further maths but it's definitely not going to hinder. Hey, we have a question specifically for Annie now. Do you find doing a non-STEM A-level as use, as a useful balance versus maths and further maths? Um, it's definitely good to, for um, providing balance and it, um, I find it quite nice to be doing a subject where I'm uh, studying something where it's more writing and reading based as opposed to um, maths based because although I really love maths, it's nice to have that balance. Yeah, and in fact, we've had someone um, who has just finished at college. He left um, at the end of this year doing exactly the same subjects as Annie. And he said the same thing, just enjoyed it as a as kind of a, a sort of something different. Um, and yeah, so that's good. Uh, so another question. Do you think you need to do a lot of independent study to succeed in further maths? So this is, a, I mean, I'll always say yes. But because that's because I'm a teacher. Um, so I'll, I, this is probably another one uh, that's good for the students. So we'll go, um, I think we'll go with Gwen for this one. Do you think you need to do a lot of independent study to succeed at further maths? Um, well, currently, so we haven't done the further maths topic. So obviously, if those are a bit harder, I might have to go home and just like re look over my notes or something, or maybe watch a quick YouTube video about just to understand the main like, key elements. Um, but obviously, so normally what we do is we do like a topic in a lesson and then the is based on that topic as well. So it's nice like consolidation for knowledge. Um, so I feel like currently I haven't had to do much extra, extra work outside of the homework and structured learning. So obviously that is four hours a week anyway. But um, prior to like the, um, the key assessments if we have one every half term, uh, obviously I have to go back and do some revision for it in the textbook and do some of the textbook questions at the back. So. I think generally to understand and know what's going on, you don't need to do too much extra work unless you struggle with a particular topic. But um, mainly just for like to remember everything. So obviously there's a lot of content and uh, if you haven't done something for a month or two, you might have forgotten it slightly. So we're just going back and doing some questions every now and then might be handy, but mm -hmm. it's not, so far it hasn't been a necessity. Go on, uh, I also think, uh, I'd also like to add that I think, um, I think it's really good to do extra, not necessarily um, maths at your 
we were covering now or will be covering at the beginning, but just um, uh, maths you might find interesting to develop kind of your interest in the subject on kind of like on a wider scale. Because um, I think I think making sure that you actually really like maths is is quite important if you're doing eight plus hours a week. Um, also for later on for us, but for things like entrance exams, um, the amount of uh, individual work you have to do is defi definitely increases uh, quite a bit, I think. Mm -hmm. or, or, or. Excellent. Uh, so we've got some more questions coming through. Do many students take maths and further maths, but just one other subject? Uh, generally, we don't advise students do that um, because that makes a very, very narrow program. Now, if a student does sit down with us and say, I know I want to do, go and do, a, I definitely want to go and do a computer science degree. I want to do maths, further maths, computer science, nothing else. We'll say, okay, that's fine. Some students start on further maths and as part of four and then drop down and a few maybe drop the one of their other subjects. Um, I think in, in my lower further maths class, I have three students who do maths, further maths and one other. And in our upper six class, I don't think we have any. So not many, but it is a potential option. So we got a question, how different is further maths from pure maths? So that's kind of an, an interesting question because pure maths is a part of the further maths. They're not different things. Um, pure maths comes up in both the maths A level and the further maths A level in different ways. And we look at different topics in both. The further maths pure side, the pure side of further maths, which is known as a core pure unit, um, is a lot more abstract than the pure side of maths in the A level. but it's an interesting kind of abstract. And I always tell my students, the maths gets weird and it gets weird in a fun way. Um, so it, it is an enjoyable. Uh, do you help prepare for any aptitude tests? Yes, we do. Um, so in terms of preparation for um, Oxford and Cambridge entrance exams as well as or pre-interview assessments as well as the exams that Cambridge sets at the end of the year, we do preparation sessions for those. We generally wait until the summer term in the first year to start those, not because students aren't engaged or you know, are willing, aren't willing to do it, but quite often students just haven't done enough maths to be able to access the vast majority of the problems at that point. So what we do is myself and another member of the maths department typically run lunchtime sessions in that summer term and then into kind of this part of the year up until October half term. We focus specifically on the what are known as the MAT and the TAMUA, which are two of the pre-entrance exams for maths for various universities. The MAT is used uh, by Oxford and Imperial directly, and then by some other universities. The Tamua similarly is used by a, a variety of universities. And then after those exams are sat, which is usually the first week of November, um, we then start focusing on students who may wish to take the STEP exam, which are used by a lot of universities as an alternate offer for quite often a maths A-level. Um, and again, we leave those until kind of that period because the majority of students who are doing those um, just won't have done enough maths to be able to access the majority of the questions. In terms of other sort of less, maybe not, I'm not gonna say less formal, but um, exam, sort of exams that are not required by university, um, we do the maths challenge. Um, every year and um, I know Conrad and Gwen, no you didn't, Annie did you do it? Yes you did, um, uh, both participated. Um, our course leader for further maths, David, often runs help sessions for those so to give a little bit of preparation with that. Okay, uh, so we've done that one, that one was asked earlier. Uh, how much of maths is, further maths is problem solving? I'd say most of it. Um, that is kind of fundamental to 
a maths course is is big on problem solving, which is why maths and further maths are considered very highly by universities um, and are still known as facilitating subjects um, because of that problem solving element. There are going to be some areas of the course that are not necessarily specifically problem solving because those are you need to learn the basic topics so that you can then problem solving. But in terms of how much of further maths is problem solving, I'd say most of it, which is good. That makes it fun. Can you give an example of a weird topic in further maths? Yes, I can. OK, so probably the first weird topic that students meet are complex numbers, um, which some students will have met before. Again, I think if you do add maths at GCSE um, or may have read about them because they're interested, but it's the concept of being able to take the square root of a negative number, which is something that in real space, in terms of a real number, you can't do. It doesn't work. Your calculator says no. Um, but in a lot of very broad topics, so in maths and in computing physics, um, particularly in quantum physics, um, even in computer game design, a lot of those courses require this concept of a number that doesn't exist, but we pretend it exists because it makes things work is kind of the first type of weird maths that we really encounter, which I really like. It's one of my favorite topics. Uh, mentioned earlier, that there are sometimes mornings and afternoon lessons with a gap. Is it tiring to have such full days and can you get burnt out doing four subjects? Okay, um, I think with that one, we'll, we'll go with Tamaya with that one. Um, so morning, afternoon lessons with a gap. Do you find full days like that tiring? Um, well, I think they're a bit tiring, but it's quite nice because you can get a lot of work done in the middle. But like on Fridays, for example, I've got a full day, so I've got three lessons in total, which is also quite tiring. But also, I think, yeah, they're quite different. I feel like the gap days, they're tiring, but they're quite helpful because you get lots of work done. So overall, it's quite nice. Okay, thank you. Um, can you get burnt out doing four? So the, what typically happens with students who are doing four subjects is because there's not many students who do it, a lot of the vast majority of those students will be spoken to by um, not necessarily those students doing maths and further maths because they're kind of similar, but a lot of the students who are on four subjects will get spoken to by a senior member of the pastoral staff around October half term just to check in and see how they're getting on and seeing if it is too much. So in terms of from a college point of view, we have a lot of processes in place to ensure that students don't get feel burnt out. And if they're going, if they're sort of starting to feel that way, we can intervene and give students the support they need to ensure that it doesn't happen. So you can, but we do as best we can as a college to make sure that that doesn't happen. Okay, ah, last, last, so we've got last question. Um, what things are in place for students who are struggling with maths or any subject? So in terms of the support that college offers, um, we, every single student here will have a tutor Typically, your tutor is one of your teachers. And so you see them for an extra half an hour a week. They report to a senior tutor who is a more senior member of the pastoral staff who may well take on students who are struggling across the board with all of their subjects, or maybe something has happened outside of college that they're finding, that's meaning they're finding college quite difficult. In terms of subject support, I can't speak for every single subject, but I know a lot of subjects do. Most teachers or maybe a whole department will run drop-in sessions uh, during the week for sort of one-to-one -one support with a specific topic, um, or even a, a student who just wants to sit and do practice for 40 minutes with, with the chance of asking a teacher for help. There are other sort of strategies that we have here at college. We have what's called our learner improvement program, which is really useful for students who find, who are either just struggling to work 
at, at their subjects or find working at home really difficult. So some students have sort of come to me and said, I really find working from home difficult. There are too many distractions. What can I do? And what we can do is we can put a timetable, a timetable period in on someone's timetable to ensure that they have that space and dedicated time to help them work. So there are lots of things that are on offer from a college point perspective and from a departmental point of view. I think that's everything. Um, thank you very much for coming this evening and thank you very much to our student panel for helping us out. Hopefully you are now thinking, those of you who hadn't put down further maths on your applications, you're now thinking, oh, maybe that's a good option for me. Uh, if you're not, then that's okay as well. But hopefully we've uh, influenced you, some of you to at least consider further maths. Thank you for coming.